Am I on? Try again. Hold on. Oh, no, it's on. <laughs> she has a green light. Good morning, everyone. It is so good to be with you this morning. And I am just going to take a second. Here we go. The power of my thoughts and words move me ever closer to the truth of my being. The power of my thoughts and words move me ever closer to the truth of my being. So when I think about the power of power, I think of it as being one of the more complex powers. When we think about the 12 powers of humankind that um, Charles Fillmore came up with, he said that when we awaken all of these 12 powers within us, that we awaken to Christ consciousness. You might call it Christ consciousness, Buddha nature, enlightenment, whatever terminology you want to use. But it's about being fully awake to our divinity and living out of that. So the power of power is represented by the disciple Philip. And over the course of the last couple of years, I have been studying um, the 12 women who supported Jesus. And so the woman that I have assigned to the power of power is Susanna. And Susanna represents purity. That's what her name means. And so really when we take that power of power and we join it with purity, then we're really talking about a power that is not a power over. It's not about having power over something. It's about the power that we have within us to live authentically. It is this power that awakens all of the other powers. So it is the power of power that gives the push to the power of love, to express unconditionally. It is the power of power that gives that push to the imagination so that we can dream, so we can dream big. And then we can, and, and out of that imagination, we can, we can use our power of understanding to become clear about what are the actions that we take in order to bring that into fruition. So the power of power is kind of this base power that comes up and, and, and lights. I, I, it's kind of like I see it as a little electrical impulse that lights up the other powers within us. But there are specific ways that we can use the power of power. And so as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about how we have the five principles. We have five basic principles in unity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch them around a little bit. So if you're used to hearing them in a certain order, this might jar you up a little bit because <laughs> I'm going to start with number five. Number five is action. Number five is we take action. And the power of power is that which empowers us to do just that. It empowers us to take action. It empowers us to be able to, to, to have the courage to step forth and to, and to do something new. To do something that, that maybe we didn't realize that we could do. Something we've always wanted to try, but couldn't do. But the fifth principle really is about what it says is that it is the step of action because the following principles are meaningless unless we act on them. They're meaningless unless we act on them. 
And so we come back around to the first principle. And the first principle is, there is one. There's one. There's one presence. There's one power. There's one life. And out of that comes principle number two, that we are expressions. We live out of that one presence. That we are divine in our nature. Our nature is divine. That is our natural, our natural essence. That is how we are created. But how do we live that? How do we live that divinity? And so as we, as we look at how do we live that divinity, we come into prayer and meditation, which is the fourth principle. Because we want to go into prayer and meditation because we want to listen. We want to listen deep within. We want to listen to that still small voice that speaks within our hearts and tells us what it is that would be authentically an expression of who we are. It would be in that meditation that we nourish and nurture our souls so that when we are out in the world, we can come back to principle number five, and we can show up as principle number two. You see where I'm going here? The principles are not linear. <laughs> Then there's principle number three. And principle number three is really the power principle. Because principle number three is our thoughts create our reality. Now I want to be really clear here. Our thoughts create our reality. Okay, so my thoughts create my reality. Your thoughts create your reality. Different perceptions. People can have different perceptions about the, same, about the same thing, about the same event. You can have different perceptions. But it's our thoughts. So if I think, oh my gosh, I'm just so sick, I'm so, I'm so tired, I'm, I'm, I'm not very well. That's going to be my experience. After a while, I'm going to be really, mm, shall we say, sick and tired. If I hold thoughts of, I am vibrantly alive. I am vibrantly alive in this moment. And in this moment, being vibrantly alive, I express my fullest divine nature. I am wise. I am compassionate. I am loving unconditionally. I see beyond the circumstance, whatever the circumstance is, in order to really live in my power. Affirming that, there's a whole different energy that comes in. And that becomes my experience. Because that is what I feel. And so when I say it and I feel it, it becomes true for me. And so it's not based on what's going on out here. Not based on what's going on out here at all. It's based on what's going on in here. So I have a little story for you. This is a story about King Arthur. King Arthur, Sir Gawain, and Lady Ragnell, or the loathsome woman. So King Arthur is out hunting with his knights and this one very beautiful, very beautiful deer comes across the path and he, t he tells them to stay back. He has one arrow left and he's gonna use that one arrow and he wants that deer. And so he takes that one arrow and he shoots that deer. And just after he uses his last arrow, out from the woods, comes his enemy. 
a knight that has been searching for King Arthur because he has felt like King Arthur has wronged him. But King Arthur is unarmed. And you know, the knights have a code. It would be, shall we say, bad form to kill somebody who is unarmed. And so the knight thinks about it for a minute and he says, I tell you what, I give you one year and one day. And I'm going to give you a riddle. And if you can solve the riddle, then I will spare your life. If you can't solve the riddle, then your life is mine. One year, one day, meet me right back here. King Arthur says, okay, I give you my word. What's the riddle? And he says, are you ready? The riddle is, what does every woman desire above all else? What does every woman desire above all else? So King Arthur goes back to his knights and he tells them what's happened and, and they all agree and, and, and they, they scour the land. They ask women, they ask men, they ask wise people, they ask anybody they can ask, what is the answer to the riddle? And they get lots of answers like, oh, every woman wants a husband who is, who is, who is virile and strong and, 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 and really good looking. And somebody else would say, oh no, every woman, every woman wants a husband who, who is rich and can support her and, and give her everything that her heart desires. And then others would say, oh, no, what every woman wants, she wants to be the most fairest in the land. She wants to be the most beautiful. She wants to be the most beautiful woman there is. None of these really sat as being true for King Arthur. And he didn't know what to do, and he was running out of time. So he decides to go back out to the woods and to sit and contemplate. So they go back out to the woods, and he's out there and he's contemplating, what does every woman desire above all else? And a woman rides up on a beautiful horse, and she is dressed elegantly and she has jewels. But when he looks at her face, her face is all red and her nose is runny and she's got this big mouth and her teeth are hanging down and she is loathsome to look at. He really has a hard time looking at this woman. But the woman says to him, King Arthur, I know the answer you seek. And he says, what's the question? And she said, the question is, what does every woman desire above all else? And I know the answer. But in order for me to give you the answer, you have to give me something. You know how that works. That's right. That's how it works. So, so he says, what, what is it that you want? And she says, I want to marry one of your knights. Now, he doesn't really feel like he can order his knights to marry someone, and especially someone that looks like that. <laughs> so she says, in particular, I want to marry Sir Gawain. So he goes, he says, well, I, I, can't, I can't order them to do that. So I need to go talk to him and see what he has to say. And so he goes over and he talks to Sir Gawain. And he says, she says she has the answer. And Sir Gawain says, my liege, if it will save your life, I will marry her. I would gladly marry her. And some of the other knights were, you know, they were starting to give him a bad time and stuff, and he just, he just told them to be quiet. 
And he went up to the loathsome woman and he knelt down on one knee and he asked her to marry him. And after that, King Arthur said, what is the answer to the question? So are you ready for the answer to the question? The answer to the question of what every woman wants beyond all else is sovereignty. Sovereignty over her own life. Now I'm going to say that it's not just the, the answer to the question of what women want. I think it's the answer to the question of what all humankind wants. Sovereignty over our own life. So there's a big wedding, big wedding feast, and Sir Gawain treats um, the loathsome woman who happens to be Lady Ragnell. Um, he treats her with respect and kindness and, and love during the whole wedding celebration. And they get into the bridal chamber and he happens to have his back to her. And she says, my husband, it is appropriate and would make me very happy if you would kiss me. Would you be willing to kiss me? And he said, I would be happy to kiss you, yes. And he turned around to take her in his arms and the loathsome woman was not standing there, but a beautiful woman, the most beautiful woman he had ever laid eyes on. And he goes, whoa, wait a minute, are you a witch? And she said, no, I had a spell cast on me by my brother. But you've broken the spell because you saw beyond. You saw beyond. But there's still more that I need to let you know. And he said, what is it? And she says, I can be beautiful by day and ugly at night. Or I can be ugly, at, ugly during the day and beautiful at night. And which would you prefer? And he thinks for a minute and he says, that is such a hard, hard decision to make. And really, it affects you more than it affects me. So I would prefer to say that whatever would make you happiest, whatever way that you would like to be, that is what I want to. And she looked at him and said, the spell is broken. I can now be beautiful both day and night because he gave her what every woman desires above all else, power over her own life. One of the greatest gifts that we can give to ourselves and to each other is power over our own lives, to recognize the power that we have within us, to make the choices that we make to allow that power to awaken the other, the other innate qualities within us, to see beyond the circumstance. Because when we see beyond the circumstance, that is when transformation happens. That is when we are able to transform our lives and the lives of others. So I have another story. This is Jesus. And it's the story of Zacchaeus. I love Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a tax collector, very, very rich and powerful man. And he lorded his power over the people in the village. <coughs> when he would collect taxes, he would collect more than just the taxes. He'd collect, you know, a little for himself too, or a lot for himself too. And he became very rich and, and there was nothing the people could do about it because they were under, he was, you know, the 
spokesperson for the, the Romans and they were under Roman guard. So Jesus is gonna come through town and Zacchaeus wants to see Jesus. Just one little challenge for Zacchaeus. He's short. He's a small guy. And he knows that he's not going to be able to see Jesus with all the crowd. So he climbs a tree. And so he's up the tree. And Jesus turns around and he looks at Zacchaeus and he says, Zacchaeus, come down. Come down from the tree, Zacchaeus. For tonight, I'm having dinner at your house. You know, I'd like to do that someday. Anybody willing to have me just call them up and say, I'm having dinner at your house tonight. Um, <laughs> but Jesus did that on more than one occasion. <laughs> Said, I'm having dinner at your house. And Zacchaeus was so excited. He goes home and he, he prepares. But there's something that happens to Zacchaeus in all of this. When Jesus shows up at his house, Zacchaeus tells him, Master, I have decided to give half of my wealth to the poor and the needy. And I am returning to everyone that I took from. I am returning what is rightfully theirs. You see, when Jesus saw him up the tree, it's kind of like being up the creek. When he saw him up the tree, he saw beyond the tax collector. He saw beyond how Zacchaeus was showing up in the moment and saw the truth of his being and called it forth. And as he called forth that truth of his being, then Zacchaeus stepped into it. The power of our thoughts to create our reality. Now that doesn't mean that every time I think positive thoughts about somebody, that they're just going to step right into that and they're going to behave the way I would like them to behave. Wouldn't the world be wonderful if that were true? For, you know, each individual to be able to have it be the way they want it to be. That's power over. This was actually about power with. Jesus was stepping into that space and lifting Zacchaeus up into a higher realization of who he is so he could stand in that authenticity to be authentically who he is. To be that authentic person. Unity has recently put out a, a booklet that is um, the writings of Martha Smock. And Martha Smock was um, one of the first writers for Unity. And she was, I'm going to say that she was the first. She, I, I may be wrong on that. She may have been one of the first. Editors for Unity, um, I can say this, Daily Word, <laughs> um, for the Daily Word magazine. And she's the one who grew it. She is the one who really got it out there. Um, oftentimes you will hear people come into Unity and they'll say, I had no idea that Unity put out Daily Word. My grandmother used to get Daily Word and she was a Baptist, you know? Um, so she really got Daily Word out there. She's a great writer. And one of the things that she says in this is she says, I know who you are. I know the truth about you. The truth is that you have a great capacity for love. I know the truth about you. You are wise. <coughs> I know the truth about you. 
All intelligence is within you to draw upon. You have all the supply that you need. You are one with the source of all supply. You are one with God. And you live in a veritable sea of substance. I know the truth. You are happy. Not happiness that is contingent on circumstances, but a happiness that comes from the inner spark that is always burning within you. Yes, I know the truth of you, and I like what I know. And she has an affirmation, and it goes like this. I am the all-wise, all-loving, all-conquering child of God. And now comes the big part. I reign supreme in all the affairs of mind and body. Sovereignty, our divine sovereignty. I reign supreme over mind and body. Let's take a moment and take that into meditation. Just taking in a breath and allowing the breath to bring you closer to that heart space. Jesus said, knock on the door and it shall be opened. And so we knock on that door of our heart. And the door is opened and we are welcomed in. It is in this sacred place. What is often referred to as the sacred place of the Most High. Where we know our oneness. We know the expression that we are. And we live out of that expression. One presence, one power, one life, all good right here in this very moment. And out of an awareness of that one presence and one power, we affirm, I am all wise. All loving. All conquering child of God. I reign supreme in all the affairs of mind and body.
I release any thoughts of limitation that would hold me back. I release any old beliefs of lack. And I fully step into my divine sovereignty. We continue to affirm. We continue to affirm that those powers that are within us that we would have awakened in this very moment. Those powers that are within us that would serve us. To live fully and authentically as ourselves. Affirming divine love, divine strength, understanding, life. Wisdom. And out of these thoughts, we hold that which we would create that which we would co-create through the power of spirit flowing through us and as us. The creative power. And we give thanks in advance. We give thanks in advance because we know. We know that whatever we hold in mind, we create. And so we just give thanks in advance for the multiple ways that God is showing up in our lives as our lives in every moment of every day. We give thanks for the multiple opportunities that we have to be that presence. To share our good with the world. And so again, just taking in a deep breath. Really cementing in this truth within every cell and atom of your being. We affirm it to be so. 
Amen.